These are the types of players that fit us and the characteristics that allow them to be successful. OKGs, our kind of guys. Great to be joined today on the OKG podcast by Matt Stainbrook, former Xavier Musketeer, played for the Musketeers for two years, 2014, 2015, after transferring from Western Michigan. Matt, it is great to be here with you today. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. And as always, uh, starting this podcast, I'd like to just give you an opportunity to tell people who may not have heard from you in a while what you're doing now, where your playing career has taken you and uh, what you're up to. Yeah, so first off, thanks for having me on. Always good to talk with you guys. Some other basketball minds who are in that uh, Xavier community, so I appreciate that. Um, But yeah, so I played uh, seven years professionally. Played one my first year in Germany, uh, played five years in Spain, and then my last year I was in Mexico. Um, So now I've transitioned out of basketball, was able to avoid, I say, quote unquote, a real job until I was 31 years old. Um, So happy about that. But now I'm working at uh, Divisions Maintenance Group, a Cincinnati-based company. We do Um, facility maintenance for a lot of companies. Um, So I'm an operations coordinator there and I'm enjoying my time, enjoy the guys I work with um, and slowly kind of figuring out life. So you're locally around Cincinnati. How, how, how nice is it to be back here around the city? I love it. So actually me and my fiance just bought a house in uh, Newport. We're in that um, East row historic district. Love that area. So fun to walk around, go downtown, see everything. Um, But it's honestly, it's it's a great change of pace for me to kind of, know that I have the weekends free. I'm not had traveling. Where am I going? What time's practice? Um, so that that change of pace and also to be able to kind of watch his eager games at normal times uh, is also a, a plus. You mentioned, you know, avoiding a real time day job for 31 years. I'm curious, like, how, how do you go about deciding what you want to do and where do you look? How, what was that process like to figure out what a day job for you is going to look like? Yeah, so it's actually really funny. I, I took some time after I was done in Mexico, and I was like, hey, I'm going to slow play this a little bit. I don't need a job right now. I kind of want to figure out, like, what I like. Um, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to, like, get a couple interviews lined up, see see what I, you know, get my feet wet. Um, the first interview I had was with Divisions Maintenance Group. And I was like, oh, I probably won't take this job. doesn't sound like it's exactly the fit. But, like, I need to, like, you know, get back in the swing of things. Um, and I, I met with the team. I met with my now boss, and I was like, I actually kind of really like this, you know, like I enjoy being able to like, because I talk with a lot of clients, but I'm not selling anything. I'm like, I just get to fix their problems. They come to me and say, hey, we're having issues with this plumbing, this electrical, this irrigation, this land. Can you help us out? And I'm like, actually, yeah, I can. Like, this is fun. Um, So I actually really like that. But it was a change of pace. And, um, you know, sitting at a desk for eight hours, it can can add up, you know, but luckily we get to be pretty active and we, we stay pretty mentally fit. I imagine sitting at a desk for somebody of your stature is probably not the easiest sell. Oh, not oh, it, it's tough. Luckily, we have those desks that raise up and down, so I'll stand up every we once in a while. Good. Go, yeah. yeah, it's good for you. Good for you. Um, all right, Matt. Let's talk a little basketball here, and I I want to start where we talked on the Sean Miller podcast about a month ago. We had Chris Mack on the show, and for people that are listening to this that may have not seen that show yet. I'd highly recommend going back and listening to that for that conversation between Sean and Chris. It was a really fantastic hour on that show. But one of the things that we spent a long time talking about was the 2015 and 2017 Sweet 16s. And in particular, as it relates to this and talking to you, the 2015 Sweet 16. Now, I know Xavier came up on the losing end of that to Sean. Uh, You played against him in that game. You were playing for Chris and just came up a little bit short at the end of that game. But What they talked about in the beginning of that and what I think stands out in a lot of Xavier fans' minds is that you shot a three to open that game. Chris told his side of the story. Sean told his side of the story of knowing that maybe that was a little wrinkle that Chris was throwing into the game plan. So I'd like to hear it from you because you didn't make that three, but as somebody that didn't really take a lot of shots from beyond the arc, I thought that was a very funny way for Chris and Xavier to start the game. Yeah, so that that was 2015. We're now in 2024. For the past nine years, I can tell you that I've thought about that moment and reenacted it in my sleep way too many times. Double digits. I can't even count on both hands. It is ridiculous. One of those, and I'll say regrets, and I don't say like a regret like that, but um, one of those things where if it was just a little different, it feels like things could have been like hugely changed. So I remember it was the night before the game. 
Coach Matt, Chris came up to me and said, like, hey, this is what we're doing first play of the game. We're going to try to mess with them, see what happens. So we're going to do a pick and pop. You and D Davis, he said, if you make it, we're doing it again. And if you make that one, we're doing it again. And I was just like, uh, okay, sounds good. So we do shoot around the day before, and we end shoot around. And he's like, hey, D, come here, let's do this. Pick and pop, top of the key. Shoot it, make it. I'm like, oh, that feels good. Okay, nice. Have that confidence going into the game. I remember setting the screen. I pop, and uh, was it Caleb Tarzuski? I think, was their big guy. He got a fingertip on the ball, on the pass. And I remember just catching it a little bit weird. So then I kind of like spin it to myself, get it lined up, shoot it, front of the rim, out. And I was just like, damn. You know, it hurt so bad because I wanted that because that would have been like, I feed off of that energy, that emotion, that like, I got you. It just felt like if that would have happened, things could have just fell in place. But um, it was a man, that game in general was just a ton of fun. Um, obviously wanted to come out uh, with a win instead of a loss, but overall, man, the atmosphere there was just incredible. Something I'll never forget. And now what's it like to see the guy who was coaching against you in that game is, is back leading the Xavier Musketeers. I feel like everyone I talked to who, whether you played for Sean the first time he was here or not, everyone at they have a, a strong opinion about him being back, and it's normally a good one. Yeah, I mean, awesome guy. I've met him a couple times. Uh, I remember the first time I think I ran into him uh, last year. Might have been after uh, I can't remember which game, but um, I remember he, you know, saw me in the hallway passing and said, "Hey, Matt, like, you know, good to see you again." Like, you know, first impressions are everything, obviously, and the fact that he remembered me after nine years, I was like, "Dang, okay, like, that's pretty impressive." Um, but then, you know, as a coach, you just hear amazing things about him. You can tell he just cares about his players, his culture. That's, you know, that's been his thing for his whole career um, is that he's a culture guy. He cares about his team. So um, everything I've heard about him, every interaction I've had with him has been nothing but positive. Oh, you are somebody that now living here in Cincinnati or around, you've been to games. I ran into you at DePaul last weekend. Uh, it, it, how much enjoyment do you get about, you know, still being – a part of the program being around, but also just being able to go with your brother and sit down and, you know, have a beverage and enjoy a game. Yeah. I love being present with anything that's Xavier related. It could be any sport. It could be any kind of function. Um, that's why whenever anyone, you know, invites me to go somewhere to go see something, I try to be as involved as possible. Um, that's even kind of taken on a little bit of a role with that victory parkway exchange. Um, we did that barrel pick, the whiskey, uh, the bourbon pick, um, and then, yeah, just being honestly able to sit in a seat and not, not stress out. I mean, I still end up stressing out, but, um, to kind of see it from a third, third party perspective, um, is a lot of fun. And then honestly, like went to the alumni function before the DePaul game, um, just meeting people who Xavier basketball and Xavier athletics and Xavier university in general is just part of their life. It, it's kind of comes full circle for me. It's like, wow, the impact that I've had on other people. And then also the impact that the university has had on me. Just, you know, it makes it really wholesome. Matt, when when competition is a part of your life for such a long period of time, you know, we, before we started recording, we were talking about this, but I remember someone told me that, you know, you had gotten really into running. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think when basketball exits your life, that's like you're you're probably looking for something to almost fill this competitive void that was such a, a big part of your life for so long. Is that, is that really, can you walk us through how you got into running? And is that sort of the, the thing that you've clung to? Yeah. So my fiance, she ran at Xavier. She did uh, cross country and track there. So that naturally kind of got my competitive juices flowing after I was done with basketball where I wanted to compete with her. So she still runs, she trains for marathons. I'm not a marathon guy. I don't know if I'll ever will be maybe five K's and 10 K's are more my pace. Um, but yeah, I like running with her. And then, you know, then it becomes, hey, you know, my, my fiance can probably run, I don't know, 630 or seven minute miles for a, a long, long time. And I remember one time she told me, I don't think you could run a sub 25K. And I was like, light bulb on, ding. OK, here we go. So I haven't attained that yet, but um, I've been I've been getting out there trying to run a lot. 
Um, yeah, it's something where it's competitive. I don't have to think too hard. You just kind of run, you listen to music, you enjoy the weather. I had, I went out yesterday and ran a 5k just because like it's 53 degrees and sunny. Like, why would I not? Um, but it definitely helps fill that competitiveness. I'm going to try to get a couple, um, destination 5ks and 10k races in here in next year. So it'll be a good time. Your last year at Xavier, I think people may not remember this, but I just constantly would, would laugh about this with you or, or thinking about the fact that you did shot put your senior year. Yep. You you were on the track and field team at Xavier. You were a shot putter for Xavier. Now, you said you met your fiance uh, doing track. Did you know her previously and she convinced you to do the shot put or did you meet her because you did the shot put? So it's funny. No, I met her previously and people might think like, oh, you just joined the track team just to like, you know, spend time with her. She had graduated because this was my grad year. So she's the same age as me, but she had already graduated. She had a you know full time job and I had you know wanted to continue to compete and be part of a team towards the end of the year. And when they said, you know, hey, we have an opportunity. We don't have a ton of we don't have like a male shot putter or discus. Um, you could score points for us possibly in the Big East uh, conference, you know, tournament. I was like, sure, let me try. You know, I wanted to kind of stay in shape. I wanted to continue doing stuff. And another, you know, you look back and you're like, just so close. Um, I got seven in shot put and the top six score. And I was like, dang, could I, you know, cemented my name in history, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. The coach was awesome. The teammates were all, all really, uh, really encouraging and nice. So. So I think I, one of the things um, we've been consistently talking to our guests on this show about is, you know, maybe, maybe you're, you've hung up your basketball Jersey and your playing days are over, but your opinion on watching this current savior team, you know, what are your thoughts? I think for a lot of people, this has been a season where maybe you tweak your expectations and you think, man, they got 10 new guys. They lost a ton of talent from the sweet 16 team last year, but what have been your observations of this current savior group? Yeah. Kind of like you said, Adam, there's every reason to be pessimistic, doubtful to say, ah, you know, hang this one up but they're still just right there for me. Um, they kind of need to get over that hump. Um, and I think they have the guys to do it. Um, like we were kind of talking about a little bit that I think the big guys in general kind of need to take one little step forward, kind of feel that game out, um, know where they can fit in. Uh, Quincy has been obviously amazing, like fun, fun guy to watch. Um, my kind of unhung, unsung hero for the team is Davion McKnight. I love the way he plays. I love, and it, it kind of would be a disservice to say, you know, the the Robin to Quincy being the Batman, but he fills that void and he steps up. And I can just tell, like, down the stretch, whether it's in the Big East tournament or towards the end of the regular season, I feel like he is just going to step up in one game that's going to be huge for pushing this team over the hump. Um, there's so many quality games coming up. Um, if you win this one tomorrow, or win this one on Wednesday against Villanova. It, I mean, it can really propel you into some confidence going into Creighton and then stepping into market. I mean, there's so many opportunities um, for them to succeed. At the same time, there's a ton for to say, hey, you know, things are falling apart. Like you said, 10 new guys, um, not a lot of like senior leadership in terms of who had been at Xavier, um, but I have so much trust in them and I'm just excited for the rest of the season. Matt, I'm curious looking at your, before we let you go here, I, I had a couple more questions just kind of on your career. And I, I'd be curious to hear what what drew you to Xavier? And when you were leaving Western Michigan and trying to find a new school, um, you know, you can go back and you can find the old pictures of how you were able to change your body in that off season and your year off and what you looked like when you were in playing shape at Xavier and everything that motivated you to be as successful as you were as a musketeer, but what drew you to Xavier originally? Yeah, it was threefold. Um, it, for me, um, probably first off academics. Um, I, I would say that even when I transferred to Xavier, I didn't know that playing professional basketball could be a thing or basketball could be a career for me. I was looking at, Hey, how can I get a, a good degree to use later on in life? Um, and I'm really happy that that happened for me. Um, so that was number one, number two athletics. Um, Xavier's a basketball school. There was no football. They were the team, the premier team. And that, that for me was like, wow, they're really invested in this. They care about it. They want to win. 
And then third um, was location. I, I grew up in Cleveland. I wanted to be somewhat close. I wanted my parents to be able to see me play. Um, and then the, op the opportunity for my brother to come down and be part of the team that just, you know, kind of all encompassed it for me. And then I, I think one of the other things about you, Matt, that kind of endeared yourself to a lot of people as you've talked so much about is how much you cared about the program since then. But is there anything that you feel like you can uh, that you want to stay involved with as far as basketball goes now that your playing career is over? You mentioned the, the Victory Parkway Exchange and doing some some little things here and there. But, you know, is coaching something that interests you or, or do you feel like, you know what, Paul, I, I'm going to help Xavier as much as we can in, in whatever ways I can. But the basketball thing is really behind me. Yeah. So, I, you know. Two things I'd have to mention. First off, I started helping coach um, the St. Lawrence Panthers over in Indiana, um, my soon-to-be nephews in seventh grade, and I've enjoyed every minute. Definitely very trying. They, they test your patience, that's for sure. Um, but it's been fun to see guys you know, progress, take a step forward, and actually like basketball. When you have a player come up to you after practice and say, hey, how can I get better at dribbling? How can I work on my shooting? You're just like, wow, this is fun. You get to see someone you know, get better. Um, and then, like you mentioned, with that Victory Parkway exchange, I've, I've enjoyed really a lot working with those guys. And I don't know if I should say this might be a, a sneak peek too soon, but um, so we did that bourbon pick. Well, we're actually going to take the barrel. We're giving it to Listerman Brewing. They're going to do a barrel aged beer. Hopefully it'll be ready by Crosstown next year. Do a release of that. Have a party there because it's a away game. Have a good time. Um, I want to stay involved however I can to help the student athletes. Cause I was at that point one time where I needed, you know, some extra help to motivation to, to make life a little bit easier. So maybe I didn't have to Uber at one point. Um, but yeah, no, I try to stay involved as much as I can because Xavier gave so much to me and I want to try to give that. You know, I wasn't going to ask the Uber question, Matt. I wasn't going to bring it up. I brought I wasn't it up. That's say anything, it. But you did it. You did it. You did. You did. No, I, I want think that on the record. Iron. If I want that on the record that I I did not do it. If you want to so see wild. a vein, if you want to see a vein <laughs> pop in my head, mention NIL and Uber. Because yep. for me, I'm just like, I look back and I'm you like, made I killing. feel like I'm a day late dollar short. I remember <laughs> even with Oakley with the goggles, I'm just like, yeah, oh, so many opportunities. It hurts. It hurts. You were the poster you child. Like, you could have, yeah, you could have been a millionaire. I, I remember looking. speaking of that. Speaking of that LA Sweet 16 game, I remember being in the hotel room we were at. I forget where we were staying, but we were um, in the hotel room. And Travis Kalanak, the CEO of Uber at that time, called me and said, hey, thanks so much for all the good publicity. Like, wish we could help you in some way. And I'm just like, me too. <laughs> do you do you look back on that and laugh or do you – or is this like the Sean Miller, you know, he gets asked a million times about being on the Tonight Show and you're going, you're rolling your eyes. I mean, I imagine you have to roll your eyes, but that at some point, you know, it's like in comedy where it's funny, it's funny, and then it's not funny. But then you mention it so much, you talk about it so much that you just break through and it's funny again because it's such a running joke. I mean, if Xavier played, what, 35 games? I don't, I don't remember how many you played yep. your second year at Xavier, but however many games. It would have been mentioned on all 35 of them if that's what the final total was. So was 100%. that uh, – was that – I mean, was it ever funny to you that you would kind of mess around with it because you just knew it was coming? Oh, yeah. It was fun. I would have a good time with it. I would tell funny stories. I didn't. I did not mind talking about it at all. Um, probably the most frustrated I would get, which was not very much, was just if it took away from basketball, if it took away from who I was as a player, or if it, you know, distracted our team or teammates because that was – in all honesty, I was not trying to shine a light on me. I was not trying to be the spotlight. I wasn't trying to distract from our team because all I cared about was winning. Um, and, and going back to it, it kind of was a thing where like I was just trying to make some money to, to get by, to help my family because we, me and my brother took scholarships and just – I was just trying to make life a little bit easier and a little bit more fun, but I wasn't trying how to much, How much did you actually drive? Like, was this an everyday thing? It was more so in the summer, I would say. Like, during the season, I don't think I drove rarely. Only, oh, yeah. just, honestly, like, maybe bored. Um, but during the summer, when, when we were we had workouts and we, had, we were staying busy, um, but there's times where it's like, hey, we have practice the next morning. Like, I need to be at bed at a decent time. Let me go do some five to seven. People are going out to dinner take people to Reds games. I remember that. It was a fun time, get out, chat with them, and honestly learn a lot about the city. 
All right. Well, it's, it. it's definitely not your fault that it became as big as it is. As a former member of the media, I can tell you that especially like when you get on the national stage and things like that and media who don't traditionally cover Xavier, they mm. want to cling to any story that they can get. And so they just right. continue to breathe life into this thing. But I did find it interesting. I was looking at your Wikipedia page before we hopped on here and it's like the the largest chunk of your Wikipedia page. <laughs> Is, is Uber. <laughs> and you know, I might even have to blame Tom Iser and, and don't quote me on this, but I don't think I like told anyone or broadcasted that I was driving Uber. I think I might have asked like compliance, like, hey, is this OK? Or like maybe I'd mentioned to Tom Iser, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, I don't know if it's OK. He's like, yeah, I think he might have told somebody. So I blame he Tom Iser. Sure did. He for Not sure. Miser, you know what? We can. I'm more than happy to lay all this blame on Tom Miser. I'm. I'm going to yeah, send fact him. Fact check that for me. Yeah. <laughs> when in no. doubt, blame Miser. That's 100%. right. Always. Yep. <laughs> Matt, we sincerely appreciate Adam and I both really appreciate you uh, coming on today, joining the OKG podcast. Uh, we know you're around. We'd love to have you on and have you around. Uh, maybe on the Sean Miller podcast at some point down the road here. Uh, it's great to talk to you and catch up. And I hope that Xavier fans listening to this appreciate it. Um, and, and tell anybody listening um, anything more about Victory Parkway Exchange or how they might be able to uh, to get involved with that. Yeah. So I believe there's a couple bottles left still. Um, we're doing a pickup. Um, I'm not sure on the time. It's, it's this uh, February 11th. So this upcoming Sunday before the Super Bowl. Um Another maybe sneak peek. Don't don't quote me on it, but um, I'll be when at that pickup. I'll be there hanging out, have a bourbon, have a drink with me. Um, I also am trying to convince JP, who will be in town, to yep. be there. So another reason to buy a bottle, come hang out, have a bite to eat, have a drink, um, and then Dad, down down the road. Uh, any opportunities? I know the the Victory Parkway Exchange is open to entertaining other businesses, trying to help out in any way we can to kind of raise that awareness for student athletes and raise money. So. Any help is all, all all we need. Breaking news, Matt. You'll you'll see me and Paul on Sunday there. We've got some oh, I loved it. We've got we'll a little plan for this event. So I, I think oh, it'll be fun. Even better. Love it. All right. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. me.